Hello there, I'm Evan Cole, and today I have for you an old format match from the World's 2011 format. This is Harkle Soul Silver through Black and White, except this time we have an extra addition to the format. We will be playing with the brand new Dragapult Prime from the brand new Celebration set coming out here in October. If you want to learn more about Dragapult Prime and my thoughts on it, I have created a discussion video with my friend Scott Creech, which you can find in the description as well as in a card here on the video. There, we discuss Dragapult, how it fits in the format, as well as showing off our deck lists. So if you want to find out about the deck list that Scott is playing on the left, you can find out there in that video. And right now, we have Scott on the left playing Dragapult Weavile Slowking, and I am on the right playing Bear Hug, one of the Dark Horse decks here in this format. And I'm actually joined by Scott today. Hello, Scott. Hello, hello. So how do you think this matchup is going to go before we get into it? So I think that uh, with Bear Hug running a very aggressive Vile Plume line to it, it's going to cripple Dragapult quite considerably. Um, it's it's one of Dragapult's biggest weaknesses is that you either like have to find a way to just cough up whether you want consistency. Uh, whether you want a decent Vile Plume matchup or whether you want um, deck space and just finding some somewhere in there to make a concession. So in your Weavile Sloking list, how much of a factor did you consider Vile Plume when you were t taking up your deck? I considered it. Uh, it. It was like a... It's it's always something that's got to be on your mind with building Vile Plume. Um like it's I, I just accepted that it's probably a hard matchup versus Vile Plume. Um and just said it's not a massive part of the format. It's in a few decks, but not considerably so. It just so happens that the decks that do run Vile Plume are so potent. We have Bear Hug here, and then of course the Truth, which is the best deck in the format, also runs Vile Plume. And I agree, I think Vile Plume is one of the biggest weaknesses for Dragapult. And we're getting into the game here. Tails never fails. I go first. Yanma, Yanma, uh, Sunflora on my, or sorry, Sunkern on my side, and uh, Cleffa and Dreepy on your side. And I just pass the turn. Yeah, that's that's a, a rough opening hand, uh, but you do have the, the Sunflora to turn around and get you going next turn. Um, meanwhile, on my side, I kind of have like a, a decent start. It's mainly just a thing where I want to turn around and get going uh, as fast as I can with trying to tear apart your hand. Yeah, I think that Vile Plume is, or sorry, the Weavile is going to be a big factor against this Vile Plume deck. See if you can get in there and pick apart my hand before I can get things going. Although, unfortunately for you, because I have that Sunflora all ready to go here on turn two, Weavile will not be able to pick it out. And looking at your draw, we see a Judge, a Psychic, and not much else. So you're just going in for that Cleffa here. Get a new hand. And now here we see why I just passed last turn. Sunflora, Yon Mega, Yon Mega, Sunshine, Grace. I have to admit, Scott, that felt very good to do. Yeah, that's, that's an absolutely disgusting opening hand. Um, I'm starting off with six cards. And you definitely have the ability uh, to match that, especially with that judge that you just played, um, to just turn around and take out the Cleffa or start attacking elsewhere if you wanted to. I think I Sonic Boom the Cleffa, but we'll see once we finish shuffling here. And uh, yeah, so there goes the Cleffa. That's, that was just a disgusting turn two. Even though Vileplume is going to take at least two more turns to get onto the battlefield, I think that's what this deck wants to do here. Yeah, you, you just applied a lot of really aggressive uh, like pressure there off the start. Uh, here comes the Claw Snag, though. Um, pulling that Judge is probably the, the best call there. Uh, there. There's an argument for grabbing the Rainbow Energy or the Rose Raid, uh, but the Judge will allow you to continue to match hand sizes ev even after I, I try my best to pull some shenanigans here. I do like getting rid of that judge. I don't know what's in your hand, but the ability to both set hand sizes equal and also be able to disrupt whatever you might be planning in the long term for your hand, I think made that card worth discarding. 
Plus, that's just one less supporter for me to use to shuffle my hand into my deck because sometimes Bear Hug's hand can get a little gunked up here. And now that you're going to eek and get your hand up to six, I'm kind of have a bit of a hard time actually being able to attack this next turn. Yeah, and that that's kind of the, the whole idea behind Claw Snagging the Judge is just to make it as rough as possible for you to turn around and uh, trying to match that hand size. So we see that I just drew Vile Plume off of the top deck. So now if you can bench the Weavile and Claw Snag away that Vile Plume, I don't know if a second one is in the deck, but that could end up being one of the linch points here in this match. But it's all depend on you actually getting that Vile Plume or that Weavile into play, because if not, Vile Plume's coming down. Yeah, and already hitting the the first Weavile and only having a uh, two two line in there makes it incredibly rough just to to find that here, because um, it would entirely depend on me going communication for the second Weavile uh, and that second Weavile being in the deck as well. So a big point of note here is that in order to bench that, to, in order to evolve into Gloom, I had to go down to five cards in hand, meaning that I could not attack. So it was a choice between attacking with Yon Mega or evolving into Gloom, and I decided to take a turn off of attacking in order to try to get that Vile Plume up and running. And as you said, you will have to try to get that Weavile up this turn, and it doesn't look like your hand supports any ways of doing that. So it looks like you're going to try to disrupt this Pokemon Reversal, but unfortunately... No dice, but at least it gets it out of your hand when that Vile Plume does come down. Yeah, um, there there was an option for me to, instead of playing down the Draclock or Rare Canding into the Dragapult, taking a turn off there and using uh, a communication hand in order to grab the second Weavile. However, with you having Sunshine Grace up, there, if, if the second Vile Plume is in the deck, then you can just search out for that. Yeah, so here we go. Communication. You do have the option for that Claw Snag, and it looks like you're going for Slow King, which is it's the more consistent play. I agree that the opportunity cost of doing that Claw Snag and getting that Vile Plume and it being the only one in my deck is probably not worth the trade-off of not being able to save it for later down the road. And instead, you're able to use the Slow King, start manipulating top decks and get that drag pulp built up. Alrighty, so here we see the second site. Um, what I'm going to want to do here is to give you just cards that you can't use. And out of the copycat communication and grass energy, the one that you can't use the most is going to be the grass energy. Uh, just since you have down the two, the two Yon Megas, and attaching energy to Yon Mega is always just a weird scenario that you just don't enjoy. <laughs> I agree. I don't think I would ever attach a grass to Yon Mega. Um, usually that is reserved for Roserade or Ursarang, which notably I have not found any Teddy Ursa yet. I have been relying just on that Sunshine Grace to get my Pokemon into play. And I do have a communication here, so I think I'm deciding if I'm able to communication into a Teddy Ursa and keep a hand size be able to use Yon Mega. So let's see if it works out here. Going to put in Sunflora. I have to imagine I'm getting Teddy Ursa. I, I can't think of what else I would get besides... Actually, I might also get a Jirachi. I think that's the other consideration, too. Yeah, you could get a Jirachi here. You could get you could get a Teddy Ursa. There's also uh, a line of thought into maybe grabbing the Rose Raid as well. The, the Rosalia. Uh, we, we do see that Jirachi coming down. Um, just just so that way you have the option to time hollow away uh, the Dragapult. Just since I went uh, Dreepy Rare Candy uh, Dragapult instead of uh, throwing down that, that one copy of Draclok that I run. And that's the power of Jirachi, especially combined with Vileplume because of punishing Rare Candy, which it always feels good to time hollow a Pokemon that has been Rare Candied. And... I think, I think Time Hollow can be one of those X factors in this matchup. Although, as we see, I bench Roselia, evolved into Vileplume, bench Jirachi. So, that was a pretty explosive series of events to get my hand size down to three. But you'll notice my bench is now full. So, unless you can knock out one of my Pokemon, I'm kind of stuck right now. 
you may be stuck, but at the same time, you can also just turn around and uh, consistency, like consistently time hollow to disrupt me uh, and just force me to continue to play out weird turns and make decisions as to whether I want to eke things back into the deck. So we do see you evolve your Dracloak into the Dragapult. So the only thing I really accomplished with that time hollow was to get rid of that rare candy Dragapult, which means you... Oh yeah, you have one Dracloak though, so you just can't ever evolve that one again. So that's actually pretty pa impactful. It, it affect, uh Actually, I think this list runs two Dracloak now that I think about it. Um, however, like the, the big thing was you effectively moved the two Psychic Energy attached to, to Dragapult to HRP. Um Taking off those, those turns of attachments that I, that I had used. Yeah, I still like the play. It just feels weird because Jirachi is now trapped in the active, and I think if I have the grass energy, I could attach to Jirachi and retreat it that way. But otherwise, I'm going to have to discard that rainbow energy, and that gives me one less for a later time hollow. I do draw the double colorless now, and I should probably just use the grass to retreat here. But we'll have to look at hand sizes first because I might not be able to meet my keen eye here or insight rather <laughs> yeah i i think you don't have quite enough cards to be able to insight to do anything here um you you could play down the the rose raid uh but again that just that just takes a an extra card out of your hand that you would have to grab back somehow Plus, Roserade confuses, which doesn't do anything to a free retreat revile. So, well, confuses with the grass energy that's in my hand. So, yeah, I'm in a weird position now where with the Vile Plume locked down, both of us are kind of trying, like, slowly accruing resources. And I think I'm going to have to try to do a long game here. I decided to just time hollow away that Dragapult, which does nothing but waste time. And it's going to be a game of can I get my hand big enough to start attacking again? Yeah, so here, here we see you at a hand size of four. I turn around and second sight, trying to find some some kind of draw support here. Um, we we decide that you know, but obviously I I forgot to play down the dragapult on my turn, so we're just going to retcon that I did. So getting this collector will allow me to fill up my hand. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that Sunflora is obviously amazing to be able to search up whatever Pokemon you need. But it can actually also help you increase your hand size. So if an opponent has more cards in hand than you, you don't have to rely just on your your draw your draw for turn to fill up your hand. You can get an extra card off that Sunflora, which I think helps this deck's math a lot more than we probably give it credit for. Obviously, Collector is going to help tier two, but again, I'm in a scenario where I can't actually bench any Pokemon, and so. I'm just trying to fill up my hand to be able to start attacking and try to even get something off the bench so I can start building up another Pokemon. Yeah, at, at this point here, you're just kind of praying that I, I can take a knockout somewhere. So at this point in the game, Scott, where do you predict it's going to go? Who do you think is winning right now? How do you think that can change? You have a clearly dominant board state here. Um, and honestly, the only way that can change is by me going through and finding a way to get three energy onto Dragapult, um, in combination with a Judge and Claw Snag just to completely tear your hand apart. That does seem like it would be the best path of coming back here. Now we do see, I opt to linear attack that Dragapult, really going to try to go in for a big time hollow play. I do think that Jirachi is going to be super impactful in this matchup but as it stands yeah this resource game on your end doesn't seem to be working out in your favor i haven't seen you attach an energy in quite a while yeah not not being able to have a way to pull up that vile plume as well uh really just puts a damper on how i can play the game uh not not being able to establish Dragapults uh, hurts quite a bit. Not being able to communication for uh, a Weavile. 
uh, hurts quite a bit. And just having such a heavy reliance on my, my draw support, which there isn't a whole lot of in this deck. Like, it's there, but it's not considerably so. Um, like, this, this matchup was just rough. Second Sight helping you out a ton here by getting that Oaks and Fury onto the top of the deck. And I do agree on, on both points. First of all, this is the power of Vileplume, right? You're effectively being shut out of, of a third of your deck, if not more. And so now your hand is just clogged. And even with this Oak, you're shuffling these cards back into your deck. So there's a chance that you could get just more items off of this draw. And additionally, you know, we go back to deck space is one of the reasons why you don't have too many draw supporters is because you have to make room for the Dragapult and the Weavile and the Slow King and the energy and everything you need to even get your Pokemon. It's a lot. So here we, we see the Claw Snag. Um, I think the, the best take here is probably... Uh, the grass energy just to prevent it from an energy signal. Um, there's also an argument for the DCE uh, since that just turbos out um, Ursa Ring Prime for you. However, like grass energy is probably the the more concerning one thanks to, to energy signal and causing that confusion. I also think that Yanma being in my hand is actually a liability. I searched it up with that Sunshine Grace, but all it's doing in my hand is being able to be a target. So even if it survived a claw snag, if you ever do get diving swipe, that gives you a chance to discard my Yanma, which will take out a whole nother attacker that's available to me later in the game. Because I know these Yanmegas are going down as soon as you actually build up a Dragapult. And I have to prepare for that. Yeah, have, having that 150 damage output is just so, so quintessential as to how Dragapult decks should operate in this format. And now we have a situation where you have four cards in hand and I have a lot more than four cards in hand and I cannot play any of them. All I have is a collector and a billion Pokemon. And this is something that can happen sometimes with this bear hug deck where your hand gets clogged because you have to build it up to attack. And once your opponent reduces their hand, you're out of luck. And look at that. I play a collector and instantly fail it just to get it out of my hand and I still just have to pass to the turn without attacking. So thankfully, we do see me draw a Rainbow Energy, and there's there's a couple of different places where it can go. It can go on the Weavile, so I can start uh, faint attacking, or it can go on this Dragapult uh, to, to try and build up towards a Diving Swipe. Now, that Dragapult had 80 damage on it, so this Rainbow puts it up to 90, which means the Time Hollow will now knock out the Dracloak underneath it. So I think that's a pretty big decision to attach the Rainbow to that Dragapult, and I did double check the deck list. There is a second Dracloak somewhere in the list, whether it's in your deck or it's in your prizes, we have yet to see. But that does mean this other Dreepy on the bench can be used as an attacker. But right now, oh, there's the other Dracloak. We just see it off the second site. But I think putting that ninth damage counter on Dracobol is a big decision. Yeah, and this just sets you up so you can turn around and Sonic Boom the Dreepy a couple of times uh, and just set it up, uh, sorry, li linear attack the Drapey a couple of times, or Sonic Boom at once, and just set it up for a massive time hollow play that I just cannot come back from. Now, something of note here, you just passed the turn when you could have retreated Weavile and used Mock Turn for 60 and promoted a Weavile. Was that intentional, or do you think you missed the chance to use that Mock Turn and hit in for 60? I think it was just a chance where I, I missed the Mock Turn. Um, and even then, I don't think that the uh, 60 would have been terribly relevant. Uh, there's a chance that here on the second turn, I could turn around and take on the Yan on, on the Yamega uh, had I done that. But I don't think it would have drastically changed the course of the game at this point. Well, here we have a situation where this is the second turn now where you have... I'm not sure. Oh, you're second sighting me. This is the second turn now where you didn't get that energy needed to start Diving Swipe, so you could have knocked out the Yanmega with a second mock turn, and it would have taken me down to just my last Yanmega as an attacker. I guess it would have allowed me to start setting up another Pokemon, because right now my hand is too big, but 
I don't know. I also think passing without shuffling my deck because you second sided me probably was a misplay. I should have gotten rid of whatever was on top. Yeah, and so me me coming in there and uh, cho choosing not to take the knockout on the Omega is most considerably a, a massive oversight on my half. However, it does does set things up for, for me to come in with a, a diving swipe here. This diving swipe is going to be quite crucial. Let's see if you can discard something good here. And... I, I agree that the Miss Mocturne was an, was an oversight, and honestly, it's not even something I considered when we played this match. I don't remember thinking to myself, oh, oh, you should have used Mocturne. I think it's just something that if we had more experience with the archetype, we would think of to do. And as it stands, that would have been the second Yon Mega knocked out with a Diving Swipe. Instead, I do have a chance to promote this Yon Mega. You have a hand of six. I think I can do Teddy Ursa DCE and have six cards in hand. It looks like I do, so I will be able to attack with Insight here. Probably go just for the Sonic Boom, right? Yeah, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't here. Um, it's your biggest damage output, and then you can turn around and pull off a really nice uh, Time Hollow turn here, here in a couple of turns. Yeah, here's the Sonic Boom, and I do agree. I think that Time Hollow it has to be the game plan here. I know you're going to knock me out again with this Diving Swipe, because again, 150 damage is a lot. It's a lot, a lot. And so my strategy now has to turn to, how can I get that drag pull off the board as quickly as possible? Yeah, we do see me throw the, the Dreepy on top, and that's just kind of so I don't uh, so, so I'm not sitting on a bunch of items th thanks to those other two communications and being uh, locked out with Vileplume. And there's the Diving Swipe discarding Yanma. Huge decision. Going back to what I was foreshadowing earlier, I'm pretty sure that's my fourth Yanma. I believe I discarded one earlier. And even if I didn't, what that means is that there is at most one Yanma left instead of the potential two because I decided to let it sit in my hand. And... Now I'm in a situation where I have to resort to Ursaring as my attacker. Interestingly, I promoted Roserade. I'm trying to think of why I did that. Okay, so there's the fourth and final Yanma. Having access to only one more Yanmega this entire game. I think it gives you an opening here. Yeah, to me, Roserade seems a little bit like a sacrificial lamb. Because um, it looks like you were short the... Uh, extra energy to start attack and to start attacking uh, with Ursaring. Actually, there it is. Um, it may just be a thing where you weren't confident in that game plan, uh, since since you'd be missing the damage counter on on Ursaring. Yeah, I'd only be doing thirty, which definitely is not a lot. And here, I think I'm just trying to dig for a rainbow. I think a rainbow for Jirachi would be huge, and this Roserade will confuse your. Dragapult, but Dragapult has free retreat. So you can just go swinging into the other Dragapult like nobody's problem. Yeah, and I think at that off off that play you are taking an educated guess that I just don't have the the additional psychic for the bench Dragapult. And looking at your hand, it looks like there is no psychic, so we'll see if this judge can get you there. Very interesting play to force you to get that sixth energy onto the board in order to even attack with the other Dragapult. Yeah, I'm I'm not, in, in retrospect, uh, not entirely sure how I feel about this judge here. Just because it does allow you to set up a, a Yamega on the bench to turn around and start swinging again. Plus, let's, let, let's look at these judges. I mean, you drew four items, and I drew a Juniper and an Energy. I don't think it's looking good for... Oh, what are we doing here? Yeah, uh, here... Yeah, here I had accidentally seen a, a fourth card with Slow King um, off, off that second site instead of uh, just the three. So it was just clear communication uh, in terms of how, how that plays out. Fortunately, it doesn't seem like it would matter here. And... Uh, we do see a retreat and a mock turn... And 
Does it Roserade have Psychic Weakness? No, it has Fire, so it lives. Yeah, thank thankfully Roserade, uh, like having that Fire Weakness, it just helps it considerably. It's one of those odd things, you know, These some of these Pokemon have Psychic, some of them have Fire. I know Vileplume has Psychic Weakness, which would hurt it against a Dragapult. Mock turn one shots Vileplume. Of course, the problem is how are you ever going to get a Vileplume into the active without using your items? Right. The The only way Vileplume ever steps into the active in this format is if, if you happen to, uh, like, bench out your opponent otherwise. Yeah, you're probably losing if you have a Vileplume in the active. I I can count uh, a number of times where, a, as playing Bear Hug, I have had to stick a Vileplume in the active and attack with it, uh, but it's it's not a position where you would like to be ever. I agree. I have also had to attack the Vileplume, and it never feels good. Uh, fortunately, this deck has, at least has it as an option, Bear Hug is built so so synergistically. It seems like every card has its place, and having the grass just being the dominant type in the deck means that you can take advantage of using your grass energy in, in dire situations. Alrighty, so here I think you're just kind of considering uh, what game plan best gets you your your remaining five prizes uh and at this point it's just kind of coming in and swinging in with uh that, that yeah mega yeah we see i have four cards in hand as well as you and yeah i sonic boom the dragapult putting it at 140 which does not knock it out and i'm holding that juniper so i think the plan for my side is to draw a rainbow energy and double time hollow I have a double colorless on Drachi, which means I can actually time hollow three Pokemon. But all your others are stage one, so it's kind of irrelevant what that third one is. But even being able to take out two in one go is is so huge. Yeah. Um, so at, at this point, I'm just kind of hoping to, to hit that Juniper as well off the diving swipe. And inside, I hit a collector. And I believe this just seals up the game at this point. It all comes down to whether Juniper draws me the rainbow, but I actually top deck it anyway, so. Still gonna draw seven here. I don't think that judge is worth using, but yeah, this time hollow, even though it's five prizes to, I think you have three or four. I think you have three. This time hollow is, is just, it, yeah, this is a game ender. Both of your Dracloak are going down, which means that with Vileplume, you have no other attackers left. Yeah, and this this is a strong reason as to why uh, Dragapult should consider playing a Flower Shop Lady uh, if if you aren't going to go with thicker Dragapult lines. Mainly just so that way, in, in a case where they go down, you can turn around and still get them back. Uh, e even under a an item lock. I agree. I love the idea of Flower Shop Lady and Dragapult. For everything that you said, you need to have access to your Pokemon at all times. And it almost feels like you you can't afford to add a thicker Dracloak line instead. It just feels like it would be dead too many times, and it's not what the deck wants. Yeah, I, I fully can I fully feel like Flower Shop Lady as a card in general in 2011 is incredibly underplayed. Uh, it's just so underutilized. There, there's a lot of decks that would gain that benefit from having additional uh, energy being cycled back into the deck and additional Pokemon being cycled back into the deck. And notably, I think it's the only effect of its kind in this whole format. With only five sets, we don't have many options for certain effects anyway, but for it being the only effect of its kind, it is surprising that we don't see it in decks. Yeah, I, I think part of that is just uh, 2011 being underdeveloped, um, having only existed for a very short period naturally. Uh, we, we don't see another effect uh, like Flower Shop Lady enter the format until Super Rod and Noble Victories. Uh, so that's a whole, you know, two, two extra sets after this. 
So we see a fun play here. I attach the grass to Roserade, energy signal your Cleffa to confuse it, which means I can now attack despite your sweet sleeping face. And now I'm down to two prizes and, you know, Dragapult's out of attackers. There's nothing left to do for, for your side of the board, unfortunately. This game's over. There's a reason why I, I, we chose for the first two games to be games where Dragapult lost. And that's because I think they were good games. Even though Dragapult lost, the ways that it lost were because of vile, of everything that we've discussed. Vile Plume, deck space, you know, limitations, inconsistency. And yet, even then, it put up a fight. We just saw Dragapult eat Yon Mega like it was nothing. So, Scott, any final thoughts about this match, about this matchup or Dragapult? Not really that I can think of. Um, we saw that me missing that mock cut play uh, didn't like come back to haunt me in any way. It wouldn't have changed the scope of the game uh, too too drastically. But yeah, I, I still feel Dragapult is, is just fine in this meta. I agree. I don't think this game taught us much new other than, uh, hey, maybe Bear Hug needs more respect too. I, I think it's a tier one strategy, personally. And I think Vile Plume and Jirachi are some of the strongest cards in the whole format. I, I definitely agree that, that Bear Hug um, is underutilized, underrepresented uh, in, in, this, uh, in this format. Well, we have learned a lot, and hopefully we can learn more. We have more Dragapult videos coming your way, and some non-Dragapult 2011 matches as well. We recorded as many games as we could, so those will be coming out here in due time. But once again, if you would like to check out our Dragapult discussion, that is linked below. Check out the other games we have with Dragapult when those come out. And that'll be it for this one. We'll see you next time.